Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Business Announcer Show. Today, I have with us a very special guest, um, Associate Director of the IB Program at Darla Moore at USC, Mark Van Essen. Uh, Mark, there's a very special thing we're here to talk about today. Congratulations on the 25th consecutive year as the number one ranked undergraduate international business program. What do you believe sets this program apart and has contributed to this remarkable achievement? Well, first of all, thanks, Ren. Thanks for having me here. Um, um, and I, yeah, as you can hear from my accent, uh, the audience here, I'm, I'm not originally from the US, I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, and I'm at the University of South Carolina for the last nine years. And the last six years I'm involved in our different programs. And one of the programs you are talking about uh, today about uh, Sven is about our undergrad international business program that just ranked last week, uh, 25 years in a row, number one uh, in the country. I mean, we're really, really excited. We were celebrating it last week. And I think the key reasons why we are so long number one is one thing, if you just look back in time, uh, we started in the beginning of the 70s already with our first international business program. So before both of us were born, Sven, uh, we were making, we had programs in South Carolina and sending students to Japan for studying the language for a year and getting an, what at that time called a MIPS degree. And we kept that investing in international business. So we have an international business department at the University of South Carolina it was called the Sunoco International Business Department. And we have more than 20 faculty from all disciplines uh, studying and loving and traveling and investigating international business topics. So I don't think there's any other place where you can study so many courses about international business. And over the years, we collaborated with more than uh, 50, 50 uh, partner universities around the world so students can studying all over the world in Europe, Asia, Latin America, Africa, or Southeast Asia or Asia in general. So there's an enormous opportunities. I think that you tell me where you want to study and probably we have a partner there. So uh, yeah, I'm, we are excited. So thanks for having me. That is incredible. Um, you know, being able to set yourself apart in that way is is so incredible and what a delight for the students um you know having that sort of opportunity uh is is just mind-blowing and is not offered by uh many universities especially to that level of scale um and of course with such a great program uh i know that the undergraduate international business program at the moore school is highly selective uh, could you share some more insights into the admissions process at uh, the IB school and what qualifies prospective students? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, first of all, apply. I mean, a lot of people don't apply because they don't think they're qualified. And that's, we look to a lot of different criteria besides just the GPA. I mean, grades are important, but that's not the only criteria. We sending students often not one semester abroad, but two or three semesters abroad. Oh, so, wow. and, and GPA is important, but I want to be, I, I want to figure out if Sven is the person that can drive in an environment outside this comfort zone in Germany, Brazil, and in Singapore. So you need other skills too. And when I say other skills, we work together with the South Carolina Honors College, and if you get into South Carolina Honors College, you have direct admits to the IB major. And otherwise, if you are admitted to the uh, to the Darla Moore School of Business, you can admit to the IB program during your first year. And then to your question about what are the skills or things we're searching for, I mean, resilience. I mean, we need to find out that you can get out of your comfort zone. Uh, you are in Germany. The educational system is different. The, the society is totally different. You're 19 or 20 years old, and how are you going to survive that? And we are here to help you. Uh, but it's also a lot, a lot of responsibility is by you guys. So that's important. So other thing is, I mean, we are an academic institution, so we search for people that love learning, that want to challenge themselves. I mean, that get out of the comfort zone, um, passion of knowledge. I mean, these are all very important things. 
But I mean, if you have a passion of international business, if you have a passion about fixing the status quo and want to change things, I mean, please apply as an undergrad. If you are at the Darla Moore School, apply during your first year, and maybe you're an undergrad at another university, you can always apply to a master of international business later. So please, please apply and well, find me on LinkedIn and send me a message and I can bring you in the connection to the right persons. Uh, so yes, thanks, Ren. Perfect. Yeah, I'll make sure to drop your LinkedIn in the episode description. Uh, so speaking more about the program itself, uh, I see the program offers two distinct tracks, the Global International Business Program and the International Business Cohort Program. How do these tracks differ and what opportunities do they provide for students? Yes. So we're trying to make it as a little bit difficult, but it's not difficult because I also understand. It. So let me try to explain it in very simple terms. The what the global track means: you come to South Carolina, and you are study at least one semester at one of these fifty other universities or partners we have. So normally we send two to four students to that partner in your junior year of the spring semester. You need to learn a language. Uh, that can be Spanish, that can be German, Italian, depending on your preferences. And you need to have a second major and you follow five IB major courses. But in essence, it means you come to South Carolina and you study a language from the beginning, from the get go. And then in your junior year, you're going to study abroad. The cohort program, we started with this idea, let's say 12 years ago. And these cohort programs are two, 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 two different things. One thing is it can be a functional cohort. So let's say you want to work at McKinsey. What are we doing is we have a management consulting cohort program for you. And you're going with a group of students from four different universities, 10, 10 to 15 from South Carolina, from Mannheim in Germany, from FGV in Brazil, and from ESSEC in Singapore, this group of 40 to 50 students, you travel from university to university and focusing on management consultancy. So you get a management consultancy project at Mannheim in Germany. You go to Singapore, you do a management project, most of the time governance related or sustainability. And then you finalize all at Brazil and you start, I forgot that. No, you're not starting. The second one, you are at the University of South Carolina. So what is the difference? Well, now you commit to three semesters to the abroad. So if you're a high school student and you know, I want to become a management consultant, I want to see the world travel and do all this core, cool and uh, exciting projects, the cohort program is something for you. Uh, if you are saying, well, I love IB, but I want also study at the University of South Carolina most of the time, then probably the more global project is more for you. Then one final thing about the cohort track is that some of the cohort tracks, as I, as I said before, are more functional based, like management consultancy, responsible leadership. I'm working right now on one on supply chain. Uh, but the other one is more, let's say you want to become a regional expert. You want to become an expert in South America. You want to become an expert and being speaking perfectly Mandarin. Then we have this more language or regional based cohort programs. And then you study at that location at least for a year and you learn the language and become an expert about that region or about that language. So the cohort is, I mean, two, three, four steps further than mm -hmm. the global track. I mean, it's it's even more IB. I mean, that's that's the idea there. And then yeah, it's not really it's in a whole other level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, then one final thing, I mean, what's not on the website, but we're working on is we also work on an accelerated master of international business. So it's possible now that so many of high school students come with credit to the university. So it's possible now that you can finish your undergrad and master degree in four years at the University Whoa. of South Carolina. So I think it's all about options and what you want uh, to make that happen. Yeah, I'm sure that, um, you know, these new opportunities are just continually thrusting uh, South Carolina, you know, at that number one spot. It's it's really tough to uh, take it from you when you're, you know, making sure that you're building 
the program uh, step by step every year. Uh, so, you know, with a focus on double majoring in the program, uh, how does the program ensure that these graduates have a, a well-rounded skill set and a knowledge base to excel in various fields? I know that, you know, we covered the location component, but what about uh, the actual, you know, structure of the program? Yes, so every IB major need to do a second what we call functional major. And that functional major can be accounting, economics, finance, marketing, supply chain, real estate, risk management, and probably I miss one, but I think these are, I mean, it's, it really is one of the functional majors we offer at the Darla Bar School of Business. And the key point is really that IB complement that functional major. So if you are an, if you are interested in IB in finance, then probably you take a course like international finance, or you take a course about understanding risk around the world. So global risk, maybe corruption. So the key thing is that these things are, in my view, are supplements. They complement each other. Right. And the IB components differentiate you from just the domestic finance student in the sense that you also have an understanding of what's happening around the world and how this global events impact decision making for firms here in South Carolina, but also in the US and other places around the world. So our students, uh, I mean, around 80 to 90 percent of all the students having internships uh or students have often a business analytics certificate too so they are high achieving students that want to get they want to have to get as much as possible knowledge and want to differentiate themselves and i think this combination of a functional major and international business is working very well because the international business is preparing you i would say for a career while the functional major is helping you to get the first job so both of these things are really complementing each other uh, pretty nicely. I, I like it a lot. Yeah, it, it sounds uh, like they are, are very uh, symbiotic with one another. Yeah. Uh, how, um, you know, do students say they most benefit uh, from the uh, external experiences in different countries to, uh, you know, double majoring uh, uh, with what they're studying, uh, what what would you say they their greatest, um, you know, benefits they say they get from doing these uh, extra labors of love towards uh, studying? Uh, well, first of all, I think that, I mean, if you ask employers what they're searching for, right? I mean, uh, some of the things are changing every year, but I mean, a lot of the things are pretty stable. I mean, they talk about resilience, flexibility. Are you curious for learning? I mean, with all this new technology uh, that's happening right now, we need to adapt as a university, but also businesses are adapting. So they search for people that have that in their DNA. And I think that's something that IB students at the Moore School really differentiate from other students. I mean, if you move from South Carolina to, Uc to Uruguay, or you're moving to Vietnam, I mean, you need to adapt. I mean, you need to change. You need to actively learning, le listening, learning, and understanding what's happening in this context. So that will that will change you. So one of the greatest thing, what I really love is when our students coming back after the junior year, talking with them about how they changed and how that impacts themselves, how they see the US, how they see themselves, and what they want to do next. So I think that study abroad, if that's the question, that's really helped them a lot for differentiating. And when they have a job interview at the top companies in the US or everywhere, they have a story to tell. They're not just studying and traveling and had a fun time. No, they really went to a top university in that country, learned the language, and really are now experts about what's happening in that region. About your, your question about the other uh, skill sets, I think, I mean, students, there's some minimum students now need to know in order to get a job, right? There's some business skills that, I mean, you need to work with Excel, Power BI, Payton, et cetera. I mean, yeah, that's kind of stable. 
that's kind of the minimum in order to get a job. But then there's other things that I think are important and the soft skills or the professional skills that are crucial. And I, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that we really prepare our students well in that, in that regard. Yeah, and uh, job placement rates are incredibly impressive uh, with a 94% placement rate. That is astounding. And uh, I don't think any other university uh, is, is near that for their program. Um, and it also seems like the alumni network for this program seems to have a strong impact on students' post-graduation success. How does the program foster and maintain these alumni connections? And what benefits do students gain from this network? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, first, we are a relatively small program. The IB on average is around 200 to 250. Uh, students. So I think when I when I was taking over the IB major, but now also as the associate dean of international programs and partnerships, I mean to be in contact with your alums is of course crucial to get them back in the classroom. I mean, I mean to get. I mean it's for alumni with alumni. I think that's very important that the students are seeing and what our alumni are now doing, uh, working with our alums as mentors. Uh, guest lectures, as I talked about before, but then we have a lot of events. I think the Moore School is doing a great, great job, especially uh, the alumni office, to have events all over the U.S. and around the world to meet our alumni. And when these events happening, the IB the International Business Department normally has a dinner with the alums to find out how they're doing, how can we help them, but also how they, how can they help us? So I think you're right; it's crucial uh because it helps and open doors for students to get at the top consultant firms top banks or financial institutions around the world so having that relationship is important uh but it's also just fascinating to see where are our students five years or ten years from now how well are they doing what are they learning and what trends are they observing that we not cover yet in our classroom but we need to cover so it's also for me a way to I would say getting the input uh, from the industry, from the professionals, besides our faculty. I just want to say one thing about our faculty. I mean, our faculty comes from all over the world. We have people from Tunisia, from Bulgaria, from China, from Brazil, and they teach you what it means to do business in Latin America or business in China, or what does it mean to do business in the MENA region. So I think. Uh, that's really special that we have so international diverse faculty from all over the place that teach our students. And they are in the classroom all the time. You, if you are a student at the Dara Moore School of Business and International Business, you will see this faculty all the time. They're teaching the classes for you. Nice. Um, and I know a couple questions back. You know, you were discussing, uh, or at least you touched on, uh, adapting with emerging trends. How do you think the program uh, is able to stay current and adapt, especially uh, with you know these very new technologies coming out and, and changing the way uh, we learn and, and teach one another? Yeah, I think one thing I really believe in is that a successful program Successful educational program can only be successful if you have the faculty that are extremely research active and are in the field. So let me explain that. So we have faculty members that are the whole year doing research in Africa and understanding what's happening in the African the African context. Or we have people that are going to China to see how multinationals uh, with states involvement involving in China and competing with the West. So I think to have people on the ground knowing what's happening around the world is really important, not just, let's say, sitting in your ivory tower. Uh, second thing is we have a folk center of international business and we have a global advisory committee. Uh, and that committee is consists of multinationals, experts in the industry, and they giving advice about our educational program. We explain our educational program and they are giving inputs of what, what we can do better. And based on that, for example, we are now 
experimenting at our master of international business with boot camps. So there are specific boot camps about cybersecurity uh, that our students get the insights from corporations of what's happening around the world. So I think we can be adjustable and flexible and we get the knowledge from the industry. On the other hand, we also have a vision. I mean, we have an idea where what is important for our students and what kinds of skills, cognitive skills they need in order to be successful. And we will focusing on that too, just to be sure that every student that gets to our program, uh, get exposed to this, get this experimental learning and out of this program, get the learning goals that we set in advance and then trying to measure that at the end with, with job placements, what is happening five years after now. And in the end, I mean, I hope they are just, just very happy and successful in their life and they make choices that they, that are, that make a difference for them and hopefully a difference for society. That is incredible, Mark. Uh, thank you, you know, so much for coming on the call with me today. Uh, to wrap up our conversation, uh, what are some of the program's goals for the future and how do you plan on building upon the momentum of this past week's uh, accomplishment? Uh, yeah, good question. I think a few things that, I mean, the world and the challenges the world is facing with, a lot of the things are, are directly related to international business, right? So we can talk about climate change. We can talk about immigration. That's not just in the US, but also in Europe. We have a lot of immigration coming from Africa. How are we dealing with that? Cyber security. Uh, populism, uh, protectionism. So all these topics, thematic courses, I think IB ha did already a lot of research on this topic. So I think it's important for the next generation leaders to understand and having that knowledge. So when they become leaders, they become responsible leaders and can make the best decision because society expect more from corporation than they probably expected 10 or 20 years ago so that's something we which we will focus on but with really maybe more integrative how you become a responsible leader and how we can work with companies to make that happen and then there is just i mean small steps i mean improving training in our core languages right i mean updating the curriculum are developing new cohort programs. I mean, we don't have, maybe we will want to work with a cohort program with, let's say, countries that are uh, well-established, developed and developing countries that we can work together, that students learn from each other and learning from the ways they do business. Uh, I mean, but also one of the things that we reached out to, to each other on LinkedIn is like more people around the world and around the US need to know about the great things we're doing here at the University of South Carolina with international business. So that will be a priority too. But I, I just want to say we, we keep innovating. We have a lot of double degree programs all over the world at the greatest level. So that's something I, I'm really passionate about. Uh, and I look forward to work with my faculty, students, alums, and all, everyone else on campus to, to make this happen. That's incredible. Thank you so much, Mark.